Hi, this is Derek. Welcome back to 31 Days of Oscar. Of course, I'm talking about movies all this month that have either been nominated for or uh, have won uh, the Academy Award for Best Picture. And today I'm going to be talking about All the King's Men. This is a 1949 winner for Best Picture. It also won Best Actor and Best Supporting Actress. Uh, this is. It's also based on a novel. Uh, which I haven't read. It shares the same name, All the King's Men. And it's, it's kind of an interesting title to me uh, because, well, like the kind of knee-jerk reaction when I see All the King's Men, I immediately think of the nursery rhyme, you know, uh, Humpty Dumpty. So, sat on a wall, had a great fall, uh, All the King's Horses and All the King's Men. Couldn't put them together again. Uh, so, you kind of think with this being a, a political drama about corruption... Uh, and things like that. So you kind of wonder if it is uh, about, if, if that's kind of where you can take the meaning of it, you know, like uh, falling from a great height. And once you've crashed down in, into pieces, there's, there's no way to put it back together again. There's, there's no going back. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, so maybe like the, the Pulitzer committee read the novel and like, yeah, that's fucking deep, man. Let's, let's give it the prize. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if there is a different origin to that. If, if you, if you know, I mean, cl clearly you're more <laughs> educated than I am. Uh, so please comment below. Let me know if there is a different origin that I'm completely missing. Um, but anyway, this is, this is a great movie. It, it really is. Uh, of course it is. It, it did win uh, best picture of 1949 and it is pretty much like the, the quintessential political drama like we've seen movies like this before i mean it's it's really uh, uh tried and true when it comes to the material like there is uh, the the rise to power from uh, rags to riches basically it is a story of uh, uh a man who, who brought himself up from pretty much nothing uh willie stark uh played uh, brilliantly in, in an oscar-winning role uh from uh, broderick crawford um where he's kind of a poor, he lives in like a farmhouse, and just almost by like accident, almost like through corruption of others, uh, he gets a chance at uh, winning political office, and you know they they kind of underestimate him, and he and he wins when he's really just sort of supposed to be like a patsy. But the the key to him is that he's he's an honest man, like he's he's talking very straight with with the people. He's he he believes in honesty and integrity, and once he makes that rise to power, he kind of falls into the corruption himself. So it's the great irony. It's it's the great story, and it is you know this transition from from man who had true beliefs and slowly but surely compromised them always in you know the name of the greater good um but ultimately becoming you know the very thing that he was opposed against so that's you know the the great drama of it and we've seen in a lot of movies and th this kind of i think in, in being as old as as it is paved the way for that and it did dance around you know some of the the more tawdry uh, aspects of of this story like you know there is uh there's there's alcoholism there is womanizing and, and things like that and they kind of have to dance around it like you never see like on screen like you know a passionate affair with with the younger lady or, or the passionate affair with uh the uh, campaign manager or anything like that so it's all just talked about a lot of it is heavily implied to uh so it it has to just in like you know the way censorship was back in the 40s, they, really there was no choice. So, I mean, definitely it it, it made strides uh, towards, you know, showing a more dramatic and adult story, basically. So, I mean, there's a lot to owe to that. And like and just in, in the story itself, it, in its its grand presentation of the movie, it's, it's directed by Robert Rawson, who would who'd later um, be called into question for... Uh, his affiliations uh, in the 50s, um, you know, black, I think he was blacklisted. Um, he, he gives a grand uh, vision uh, to this movie where we see in, you know, the, the, the sets of the movie we see in, in the uh, wardrobe of, of, of the main character, how he changes and how, you know, he's, he's in this small farmhouse to begin with very intimate, close to his wife. Then he ends up in this huge mans mansion, and he's almost isolated and far away from his wife, needless to say. So, like, even, like, I'd say something like Citizen Kane that would follow may have drawn some inspiration from this movie. So, uh, it's definitely a great achievement in, in, in that respect alone. Um, but I, I would say 
the the strongest aspect of this movie is is uh, Crawford's performance. He's great. He won an Oscar for it. Um, he he's uh, for, from what I hear of the novel, he was not so much the focus, but they brought him in, into a lot of focus here, uh, where the the main focus of the novel and it, it is narrated uh, by uh, the reporter character uh, played by John Ireland who. He starts off, you know, just almost like, almost like on a whim, like his his editor or whatever tells him, "Hey, go to this little town in Hicksville or whatever, and, and cover this guy." And then he begins a friendship with him, gets a job from him, and then like goes from being a reporter to being basically like a private investigator for him to cover up, like uncover uh, dirt from you know all his opponents and things like that. So there's a lot of uh, corruption and backdoor deals and, and things like that very scandalous very political so uh, th there's that too and uh also great in the performance is is uh mercedes mccambridge which this apparently this was her first movie and she won an oscar for best supporting actress for it so hey not too bad but of course you know every time i i, I, I watch it i'm like kind of hearing uh, uh reagan from the exorcist in my head i can't i can't shake that um but anyway uh uh, it, it really is a great movie, and uh, again, it, it kind of set up a lot for what we'd see in, in political dramas, and, and, and that's the thing, too, like, I, I know this was, well, the novel, to begin with, was loosely based on a Louisiana senator or, or governor or something uh, named Huey Long, I believe, uh, it, it very much mirrored his, his life story, you know, from humble beginnings to corruption and uh, uh, selling his soul basically um, all in the name of the greater good but you know the path to hell is paved with good intentions as they say uh, so there there's that to consider but at the same time like the movie's like over half a century old but at the same time you can kind of draw modern parallels to oh this could be a or b or c modern day politician you know so it is a timeless tale of politics and, and corruption uh the story could be told today and it would pretty much remain as timely in fact well they they did actually remake it with uh sean penn uh which i didn't see but i i heard not a lot of people like that movie i don't know why whether it wasn't uh a fair adaptation or just on its own wasn't a good movie, but I'd like to check it out someday. It was written and directed by uh, Steve Zalian, who's, who's very talented, and I love Sean Penn, and uh, Jude Law is in it, Kate Winslet's in it. How could it be bad? Um, famous last words. But anyway, uh, as is this movie, uh, well-deserving a Best Picture win. A classic um, really paved the way, I think, for, for a lot of for like basically the the groundwork the template for these types of movies about the uh, uh, political corruption and uh corruption of character which is all about uh so definitely uh, check it out if you get a chance i think it's still only on dvd i don't think there's a blu-ray just yet so uh definitely check this out this kind of coinc this dvd here it coincided with the release of of the uh, remake so there's like even like in the special features it says a uh, sneak peek at the new theatrical film this i guess dvd's from 2006 uh, all the king's men including interviews with james Gallifini, jude law and anthony hopkins and you know i, I did watch that and i was like yeah this movie looks good but whatever uh definitely check it out if you get a chance so that's my review of all the king's men if you like this video give me a thumbs up that'd be great uh, be sure to comment rate subscribe all that good stuff visit derek 237com and until next time i'll see you later